all your answers in the listening question booklet. At the end of the test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. In this section, you are going to hear a conversation. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 7. Listen carefully to the first part of the conversation and answer questions 1 to 7. Rita speaking. What should I do for you? Oh, hi. I'd like to order some stationery. Could I know your name? Jackson Paris. Right. Can I just confirm your account number and the name of your company, Jackson? Sure. The number is 692411. Six nine two four double one. Right. And you're from Rainbow Computer? No, the company is Rainbow Communications. Oh, OK. I'll just fix that on the system. Communications. And what would you like to order, Jackson? Envelopes. We need a box of A4, that is, normal size envelopes. White, yellow or manila? We'll have the plain white, please but the ones with the little windows. OK, one box. A4, white. Just one box, was it? Um, on second thoughts, make those two boxes. We go through heaps of envelopes. As a matter of interest, are they made from recycled paper? No, you can't get white recycled paper. The recycled ones are grey, and they're more expensive, actually. Right, we'll stick to white, then. Something else, Jackson? Yes, we need some coloured photocopy paper. What colours do you have? We've got purple, light blue, blue, light green, whatever you want, pretty much. There are 500 sheets on the pack. Let me see. We're going to need a lot of blue paper for our new price lists. So can you give us 10 packs, please? Make sure it's the light blue, though. 10 packs of the light blue. Anything else that we can help you with? Let me think. What else do we need? I'm sure there was something else. Ends, paper clips, fax paper, computer supplies, office furniture. Oh, yes. We need floppy disks. Do you have those nice coloured ones? Yes, but they're a bit more expensive than the black ones. That's all right. I'm not paying anyway. Right. Floppy disks. What about diaries next year? We've got them in stock already, and it's a good idea to order early. No, I think we're all right for diaries, but something we do need is one of those big wall calendars. You know, one that shows the whole year at a glance. Do you stock those? We certainly do. OK, can you include a wall calendar then, with the other stuff? Just make sure it's got the whole year on the one side. Sure. Now you have some time to look at questions 8 to 10. Now listen to the next part of the conversation and answer questions 8 to 10. And do you have a copy of our new catalogue? No, I don't. But would you send one? Yes, I'll pop one in with the order. You'll find it a lot easier to remember what you need if you have our catalogue in front of you next time. Yes, good idea. And when can you deliver this? Should be with you tomorrow morning. Can you make sure that it's not after 11.30am? Because we have to go out at 12. There's only myself here on Fridays. Fine. I'll make a note in the delivery docket that they should deliver before half past 11. Thanks very much. Thanks. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
You are going to hear a conversation which happened in a travel agency. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. Hi. I would like to make a reservation for a round-trip plane ticket from London to New York. Welcome to the Student Travel Agency. London to New York. Let me see if we have any student specials for that flight. Yes, we do, in fact. What days would you like to fly? I am looking for a flight around the 10th of October or so. And how about your return date? Ideally, the 31st of October. Let me check our computers to see if these dates are available. Are you looking for economy class or first class? Economy class will be just fine. We have an open flight on the 10th, but for your returning flight, the 31st of October is already fully booked. If you want to upgrade to first class, there are openings for the 31st. Just a few seats left, though. How much do I have to add for first class? First class will be around 20 to 25 percent more. Well, that is not worth it. I would rather just fly on another day. Do I have any other options? There are open seats back to London on the 1st of November. There are openings for first class that day too. No, I won't be able to do that because I have to work. Is there anything before the 31st? Maybe the 30th or 29th? Let me check. You can fly on the 29th, but not the 30th. Hmm, the 29th is a little bit early. Is there any way I can be on a waiting list of some sort? Of course, but you should still confirm a return date just to be safe. OK. How about if I book a return date on the 29th and add my name to the waiting list for the 31st? Can I do that? Sure, I can do that for you. Do you also want to add your name on the waiting list for the 30th also? I would recommend this in the scenario that you do not get the flight for the 31st. That is a good idea. How much will the round trip cost? I will calculate your price for you. Your total will be £565, not including tax. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. That's not too bad. Is there any discount for students? That is already including the discount. Without the discount, the price is easily over £600. OK, that sounds good then. Please put me down for those dates. I will need your information. Name and student identification number, please. Kenneth Connolly, student ID... Nine two one two three zero two zero. Your phone number, please. Eight seven zero five two one zero nine. Please tell me your mailing address. Three five four, Westchester Drive, London. Thank you very much, sir. How would you like to pay for the ticket? I think I will pay in cash. Well, you don't need to pay right now. Just when you come to pick up the tickets. You will need to pick up the tickets at least two weeks before departure. That is no problem. One quick question. What happens if for some reason I need to cancel my trip? The student discount tickets are unfortunately non-refundable. However, if your cancellation is before 24 hours of takeoff time, then you can reschedule your flight for another day. If the cancellation is within 24 hours, then you forfeit your ticket. I understand. Well, thank you very much. I will see you next week. See you then.
You now have half a minute to check your answers. You will hear a tutor giving advice to a student. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 28. Listen carefully to the first part of the conversation and answer questions 21 to 28. Hi, Leo. What is it you wanted to ask me about? I'm worried about the exams. I don't mean if I pass them or not. I mean about revising. I don't think I know how to revise. I mean, every time I start looking back over my work, I just switch off. I can't concentrate. I don't think you're the first student that ever said that, Leo. Mm. Are you revising at the right time? I mean, are you leaving it until too late at night when you've got no energy left? It's hard to achieve anything when you're exhausted. No, not really. It doesn't seem to make any difference what time it is. Mm. Well, are you worrying too much about the subjects you feel you're not very good at? I mean, are you revising only what you find difficult? Hmm, I guess I am doing that. Isn't that the best approach to revision? Not necessarily. I'd say it's better to revise something you enjoy and something you feel confident about first. Hmm. That'll get you into the swing of things, and then you can go on to more challenging things. Anyway, you have to think about the whole purpose of revision. Is the objective to do as well as you possibly can in your strong subjects or to bring your weaker subjects up to an acceptable level. I'm not sure I see the point of revising what I think I'll pass anyway. Uh, but revising a stronger subject might mean getting an A grade rather than a B. Mm. That might be more rewarding and beneficial in the long run. Mm. You might look back and feel a greater sense of pride in getting a couple of A grades than you would about scraping through three or four other subjects. Yes, I see what you're saying. I hadn't thought about it like that before. I'm not saying that that's what you should do. I'm trying to help you see the possibilities. Yes, I see that. Do you think I should accept that there are one or two subjects I'll fail and just forget about them? Oh, I wouldn't want to give you that advice. Mm. I think you should go into each of the exams at least hoping for a pass grade. Mm -hmm. My advice would be to set a time limit on how long you'll spend on each subject. You may want to spend a little longer on the subjects you find most difficult but not an excessive amount of time. Yes, thanks. That's helpful advice. Do you have any more tips about how to go about the actual studying? I mean, how can I keep focused? Well, what sort of learner do you think you are? What do you mean? Well, if you're a visual learner, you like seeing things. From what I know of you, I think you probably are a very visual learner. Huh. So what does that mean in terms of revising? You probably learn best with images or diagrams. You could try organising information into tables or flowcharts. Hmm. I do sometimes make mind maps. Good idea. Huh. I think mind maps can really help you organise your thoughts. And another thing, have you thought about revising with other students? I didn't think that would be a good idea. I mean, if I can't concentrate by myself, <laughs> I certainly wouldn't be able to concentrate when there's another person there to distract me. Now you have some time to look at questions 29 and 30. Now listen to the rest of the conversation and answer questions 29 and 30. Hmm, that probably isn't true. 
another person might help you focus.、Mm. Lots of students get together with a friend, sometimes in groups, to revise. They usually work out some sort of structured procedure. Okay, I'll think about it. I guess with a friend you could test each other. I mean, revise for a while and then take it in turns to ask each other questions. Now you're thinking in the right direction. <laughs> you could also write short summaries or essay introductions, say, and then read and comment on each other's work.、Hmm. Both positive and critical comments coming from a peer can be very helpful. There are all sorts of collaborative strategies, and apart from anything else, having company is so much nicer than struggling through alone. <laughs> okay, you've given me a lot to think about. Thanks for your time. I feel much more positive than I did. I'm really glad to hear that. Coming to see me in the first place was very sensible. <laughs> Do come back and tell me how things are going in a couple of weeks. You now have half a minute to check your answers. You are going to hear a conversation on rivers. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Now listen carefully and answer questions thirty-one to forty. Please tell me about the current state of the Amazon. We have increased deforestation, increased human population relating to deforestation, and a role of fire in the Amazon on a scale that's never been seen in history. At the same time, you can see progress in trying to counter that negative trend. How do you see this? We see this in the creation of national parks and indigenous areas, and efforts to fund sustainable development activities for locals. We see both good and the bad, and it's going to be a race to finish. I understand that you started the minimum critical size of ecosystems project. Could you tell me about it? A number of years ago, it became apparent that those practicing conservationists didn't have the scientific information available to properly design a conservation area. They didn't know how big it had to be, right? People were learning that as forests fragment, the fragments begin to shed species after they become isolated, so they end up becoming poor examples of what they had been. This relates to the size of the fragment. Do people still study this? Yes, there is a rich subfield of conservation biology that looks at the efforts of fragmentation. One of the consequences is a general policy response to set up protected areas that are fairly large, something on the order of 1,000 square kilometers. Can you talk a little bit more about the forest fragmentation? As habitats are destroyed, they are accompanied by habitat fragmentation. So when 50% of a forest is lost, the remaining 50% being is not one large block but smaller pieces, which makes the conservation problem even worse than saying that 50% has been lost. And this affects not just forest but species diversity, correct? In terms of species loss, we can't give you precise numbers about how many species are lost because of these fragmented landscapes, but we're beginning to get close to where we can make that estimation. And so, one of the policy responses to all of this, beyond just trying to create large protected areas, is to try and reconnect the fragments. You've been active in many projects studying the Amazon region over the years. 
Can you tell us about that process of understanding the Amazon? When people first started looking at conservation priorities, there was not much information about the geography of plant and animal species. One of the first clues was an analysis done in 1969. This looked at bird species and found geographic clusters of species which occurred nowhere else. And those are priority areas for conservation. Was this when people began prioritising refuges? Yes, it was the first time that someone looked basin-wide at priorities, giving priority to so-called refugian areas. Was this when the new trend to use geographic information systems, or a GIS, started? That was in 1990 after we worked out a whole set of biological and conservational priorities and produced a big map using GIS. What are some of the things that GIS does? Well, there are several advantages of using a geographic information system. First, you can continually update the system so that it's now a constantly changing picture. You can actually watch changes. Then you can include large amounts of data, including information about the vectors of development. Roads, railroads, pipelines, hydroelectric projects, etc. And finally, because it is accessible on the internet, it makes this information available to anyone who's interested. You now have half a minute to check your answers.